happy to be back again with day five of Crooked Star. And today is Rachel's 23rd birthday, so it's gonna be a great day. But today's speed paint is kind of depressing, so I'm sorry. Before we get into what's going to be drawn today, a little background on what's been going on with Crooked Paw since yesterday's speed paint. He's now a warrior, Crooked Jaw. He has a unique warrior naming ceremony. But I guess that makes sense because he already had a weird kit naming ceremony and everything else. Why not continue on having weird ceremonies? After saving Willowpaw's life, Hillstar is calling a patrol and says, I want Crooked Paw to go. No, I want Crooked Jaw! Ta-da! So dramatic! Much different than the usual script for naming ceremonies. Crooked Jaw is very fond of Willowpaw, later Willow Breeze. Maple Shade does not like them together. And Crooked Jaw is wising up, realizing that he shouldn't look up to Maple Shade as much. He's a warrior, and so is she, so why should she be bossing him around? I'll quote a little scene from her on pages 236 through 237 of Crooked Star's Promise. Crooked Jaw met her gaze. At least he treats me like an equal, he challenged. Maple Shade broke into a purr. You're not upset because I reminded you of your promise, are you? She pressed against him, guiding him forward, away from Goosefeather. Maybe I was a little harsh, but I was frightened that you were forgetting your destiny. I want you to be the greatest warrior River Clan has ever known. The greatest any clan will ever know. Willowpaw is a sweet, pretty cat, and I'm not surprised you're fond of her. But the sweetest traps are often the most dangerous. She will soften you and sway you from your course. She halted. You do still want to be a great warrior, don't you? Yes, Crooked Jaw cried. Very good. Maple Shade stopped him with a flick of her tail. That's all I ask. She padded on into the mist, her voice trailing after her. Everything I do, Crooked Jaw, is with your best interest at heart. Maple Shade is angry that he's getting too attached to this she cat, so she tricks Willow Breeze so she gets taken by the two legs. What a jerk! Crooked Jaw confronts Maple Shade after saving his mate. This scene is on pages 312 through 313. You have a wonderful destiny, Crooked Jaw. You're not just going to be the greatest leader of your clan. You're going to be the greatest leader of any clan. She stopped to catch her breath. But you have to keep your promise to me. He crouched beside her. Of course, I will. You're going to have to make sacrifices. She warned. Your life is not your own. You belong to your clan. Don't be distracted from the wonderful things you can achieve! The greatest leader of any clan? Excitement flashed through Crooked Jaw's Maple Shade went on. And you will achieve so much, as long as you have me here to guide you. She seemed to be gaining strength with every word. I have chosen to help you! No one else, just you! Never forget that the clan is greater than its cats. Even if you sacrifice every cat who's ever loved you, it will be no more than shedding raindrops from your fur. Because, even if they go, the clan will still be there, and relying on you. Do you agree? She lifted her gaze to meet his. I'm going to be the greatest leader any clan has ever known. I can do anything. Oh no, he agreed to it. This will not be good. Why are you still listening to her? She almost killed Willowbree. She got her taken by the two legs. What the heck, man? Common sense. What? So we finally got into it. The scene that my sister Rachel's going to be drawing today is of Crooked Jaw leaving Rainflower to die, sacrificing her like Maple Shade told him to. I'll read you this scene now. It's on pages 355 through 359 of Crooked Star's Promise. Split up! Crooked Jaw yelled. Oakheart veered up the slope. Beetle Nose shot straight ahead. Crooked Jaw swerved towards the river, taking the path around the top of the camp. He glanced back and saw the dog thumping behind him. Flying past the camp, he skimmed a patch of withered bluebells. Blood roared in his ears as he weaved between the blurring trees. The dog thundered behind him, saliva flicking from his muzzle. Crooked Jaw skidded on the wet moss and lurched sideways, fighting to keep his footing. He could hear the dog's sharp, hot breath on his tail. His lungs screamed, but terror drove him on. The camp was behind them now. Crooked Jaw swung sideways and headed downhill, hoping to gain speed. The dog tried to follow, 
but its clumsy paw slid on the grass and it crashed onto its side. Crooked Jaw bounded down the slope, the river glittering from the willows. If he could just make it to the water, he could catch his breath. The dog was back on its paws and pounding after him. With a grunt, Crooked Jaw broke through the swath of ferns edging the bank and burst onto the shore. Rainflower was standing among the rocks at the water's edge, drinking from the river. She spun around, her eyes wide, staring at him in horror. Dog! Crooked Jaw turned and raced back up the slope. The dog couldn't be allowed to reach the shore. He spotted it hurtling towards the ferns and screeched to get its attention. The dog tried to turn when it saw him, but its weight carried it down the long skidding arc that crashed through the bushes onto the shore. A terrified shriek split the air. Rainflower! Crooked Jaw whipped around, claws throwing up earth as he ran for the shore. He shot through the ferns in time to see his mother hit the water. The dog stopped, its eyes glittering with surprise, and glanced back at the cat thrashing among the rocky shallows. Its gaze lit up. Crooked Jaw growled and leaped for the dog, slashing its nose. He turned and ran. The dog howled, rattling stones as it gave chase. Crooked Jaw gulped for air and he hauled himself up the hill. He felt the ground shake beneath his paws. The dog was gaining on him. Oakheart burst from the hawkthorn ahead. Go and save Rainflower! Beetlenose skidded out beside him. We'll take the dog! Crooked Jaw dived into the prickly branches and crouched. Trembling, his paws pounded away through the willows. <sighs> Gasping, he struggled out of the bush and bounded downhill. He scrambled through the ferns and scanned the shore. R Rainflower? His mother lay in the water, pressed by the current against a jagged rock where the river slid silently around her, tugging at her soft gray fur. Crooked Jaw darted down the bank and splashed into the shallows. Leaning forward, he grabbed her by her scruff and dragged her from the water. Leave, Leave her! her. Shade's scent enveloped him. Save your clanmates! The water-drenching rainflower's pelt tasted of blood. She must have hit a rock when the dog knocked her into the river. With a jolt of horror, Crooked Jaw realized that his mother's eyes were open and blank. He let her body fall onto the pebbles and backed away. I, I have to fetch Brambleberry! Mapleshade's outline appeared in front of him, her orange and white fur almost transparent so that he could see the reeds and water behind. Get back to the chase. You have to be there. Remember your promise. Crooked Jaw hesitated. Mapleshade hissed in his face. You want to be great, don't you? Crooked Jaw glanced once more at his mother, still with water streaming from her pelt. What else could he do for her now? Taking a deep breath, he turned and ran back up the bank. He caught up with his clanmates on the other side of the hawkthorn bushes. The dog was tiring, tongue hanging, lumbering clumsily through the undergrowth. Crooked Jaw pelted past him and fell in beside Oakheart. Oakheart glanced at him out of the corner of his eye and kept running. The trees were thinning. The land flattened out as they approached the farm. The warriors broke through the River Clan scent line, leaving their territory. A wooden fence loomed ahead and they squeezed underneath it, racing onto a wide field. Cows moved slowly around the grass, and the dog yelped from behind them. It couldn't get under the fence, and was venting its fury in snarls. Triumph flared in Crooked Jaw's belly. We did it! He came to a halt beside his clanmates. They turned, panting, and stared at the dog. Its eyes burned with rage as it scrabbled the dirt beneath the fence. Crooked Jaw arced his back and hissed. Dumb dog! Elkhart circled him, bristling. Beetle Nose was panting, white rims showing around his eyes. A shout rang through the willows. Crooked Jaw crouched in the grass as the two legs strode up behind the dog and grabbed it by its neck. Cursing and yelping, the two legs dragged it away. Relief flooded Crooked Jaw. Is Rainflower okay? Oakheart's question hit him like a stone. Crooked Jaw stared at his brother. I... I was too late, he whispered. She's dead? Oakheart's eyes glimmered. Was it the dog? Did it bite her? It knocked her in the water. Crooked Jaw lowered his gaze. She must have hit her head on a rock as she fell. Oakheart stiffened. Maybe she was just stunned. Did you get Brambleberry? She might be awake by now. Hope edged his mew. I... I left her by the river. You left her? Oakheart blinked at him. You didn't get Brambleberry? There wasn't time. I had to stop the dog. Oakheart bristled. We were taking care of the dog. I left you to take care of Rainflower. The hardness in his brother's mew turned Crooked Jaw's blood cold. Had he made the wrong decision? He closed his eyes. No, I promised to save my clan. And that's what I did. Rainflower was dead. She was definitely dead. W wasn't she? He left his own mother to die. I mean, she wasn't the best mother, and she may have already been gone. But still, he didn't know for sure. She didn't deserve that. 
Crooked Jaw's father, Shellheart, is heartbroken after Rainflower dies. They had their issues, sure, but she was his mate at one point. So he decides to retire from being clan deputy, and dies soon after. And Mapleshade, rubbing her paws together, laughing maniacally in the background, bends fate in Crooked Jaw's favor when she fakes an omen of a squirrel with a twisted jaw in the fresh kill pile for Hillstar to see and be prompted to make Crooked Jaw his deputy. How lucky is he to become clan deputy on his leader's last life? He only has to serve as clan deputy for about a moon before Hailstar is finished off. Thistleclaw is really jealous of this because he's like, what the heck, my dark forest warrior cat, why, why can't you do the same things for me, man? I'm, I'm trying just as hard as he is. Why is it so easy for Crooked Jaw? It's not fair. Anyways, so yeah, Maple Shade helped with finishing off Hailstar as well. She asked Crooked Jaw how much he was willing to sacrifice to become clan leader. He said everything. Well, he didn't just say it. He promised it. How many times do I have to say this? Don't make pinky promises with cats you don't know! Especially if the price is sacrificing every person in your life that you love! I'd love to hear in the comments section down below what you think about the whole sacrificing with Maple Shade. Do you think that she really has the power to make Rainflower and Hailstar die? Or were they destined to die anyways? With or without that promise? Let me know what you think down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure to go and check out the video over on the side of my last speed paint. And click that subscribe button so you can always be notified when I make my next video. Alright guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon with the next speed paint. Bye bye